So now it's time for some measurements. Okay, so uh, we are now at the point of doing some measurements. It's about six hours uh, after I recorded the first segment. I am located on the patio of my home in Blossom Valley, California, with my telescope next to me. Uh, the telescope has been set up and polar aligned, and it, the, all the hardware is connected, the cameras are talking, um, and the uh, sky map is connected to the telescope. The telescope is currently pointing in the approximate direction of Polaris. As I said to you earlier, workflow is critical, so I am going to use a sequence that I've developed so I got to my sequencer and I'm going to run image variable star. And I am now going to get a number of dialog boxes come up, which I am going to respond to. And this will walk me through the process of getting everything set up so that I am imaging my star in the right fashion. So. The first thing it asks me is, have I determined the variable star location? I have. Uh, do I have my UV IR cut filter in place? Uh, I do. I have the uh, fourth position on the filter wheel selected, which is the UV IR cut filter. Is the dew shield in place and are the heaters enabled? Um, uh, that might seem <laughs> rather a uh, rudimentary um, thing to check, but it's 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 a little embarrassing if you get into a photometry run and find that either you've got to put the dew shield on or the dew heaters are not working properly and um, uh, everything's beginning to dew up. If I check the uh, Pegasus Astro power box here, I can see that my temperature is uh, my nighttime temperature and the dew point are almost coinciding and it's a very damp evening here already with 98% humidity. So the dew heaters are going to be working uh, now to keep both the guide scope and the OTA free from dew. Have I achieved appropriate focus? Yes, I focused the OTA during the telescope setup. Um, focus doesn't have to be precise for photometry. Uh, in fact, soft focus can help a little bit because it spreads the light over a slightly larger radius um, and it stops such a severe peak. Um, and one of the things you're trying to avoid in photometry is uh, to saturate the um, is to saturate the uh, camera and having soft focus um, enables or reduces that problem somewhat. Okay, so now it's going to ask me to move on to my target. So I am going to open my sky map. And the name of my target is V576 PEG, which I've loaded in there. So I'm going to press return. That brings the sky map round onto the target. And now I'm going to slew the telescope. And as you can see now, with the white square moving left to right on the sky map, that is my telescope slewing towards my variable star target. And uh, if you're wondering what the noise is in the background, I'm not sure if we're, you're picking that up here, but we're pretty much um, in the country here. Uh, coyotes are a fairly regular visitor to the property, and uh, several of the local dogs have heard the coyotes coming in, and uh, they're barking behind me at the moment. So <laughs> um, that's one of the joys of living in the country, but personally, I like it. Now, um, I do not do a one, two, or three star alignment process uh, with the mount. So we're not going to be accurately positioned at the moment. And what I'm going to do, or you will see that the sequencer is going to ask me to do it in a minute, is do a plate salt in order to correct the position of the mount. 
So I'm going to go back into uh, Sharp Cap. And before we do the plate solving, it's going to ask me to load the appropriate camera profile. So that would be 533 MC variable star observation. I'm going to load that. And I'm now going to quickly check down through the camera parameters to make sure everything's okay. Color space is correct. Capture area is correct. I am going to put this onto fits rather than PNG. I'm going to go down through. My cooler is on, but it's set to the incorrect temperature. I need to set it to 5 degrees because that's what I have my dart set for. And I am going to um, actually, while we're waiting for the uh, camera to reach its target temperature of minus five degrees, we're gonna uh, we're gonna load our dark and our flat files. I actually captured these uh, the other night. And I actually like to apply my dark and flats at the time of the image capture rather than do it in post. It's easier. Um, a lot of people do recommend doing this in post. Um, and uh, there are various reasons for that. But we this evening are going to be doing it uh, in pre-processing. So I've loaded my camera profile. I'm just going to connect my scope to uh, sharp cap and I'm getting close to my target temperature here so I'm going to move on to the next step. I've added my darks and flats and now we're about to do um, plate salt and so what's happened is that the gain of the uh, camera has been set high at 550, the exposure has been set to 10 seconds and I'm being made to wait to ensure that the mount is perfectly stable. And as soon as we get down to zero seconds, a plate solve is going to be initiated. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a picture of the sky, compare that to uh, determine where we're pointing, determine where we should be pointing, determine the error, and then correct the position of the OTA accordingly. And that is taking place, or will be taking place, as soon as we capture the frame. And it looks as though we were actually pretty much pointing in the right direction. So the scope has been prompted to correct itself by just 0 0.2 degrees. And now I'm being asked to wait for the mount to stabilize again. And so we will just need to wait until this gets to 0 seconds again to move to the next stage. Okay, so the mount is now stabilized. Um, I actually um, have PHD2 guiding already up and running, so I am going to uh, just clear some things down here. Uh, I am going to, uh, we are connected, we're looping. I'm going to, we're going to select the stars for guiding. And I actually use the multi star option within PHD2 guiding. So as you can see, multiple stars have been selected. I am going to start to guide. And the guiding software has started. And we appear to be working okay, so I'm going to minimize this. PHD2 guiding is going. And we have come to the end of our sequence to um, get us ready to start image capture. But there's one thing that we do need to do, and that's we need to make sure that the chosen exposure and gain for the imaging which we've initially set to 120 and 60 seconds, is um, correct. And if it's not correct, then we will need to adjust the gain of the camera to make sure that we're um, getting about the right peak ADU count for our target star. And typically, 
uh, since our maximum value is the 16-bit value of 65,000 um, and change, um, I typically will set my uh, maximum ADU, um, I want to see something in the order of about 20 to 30,000 uh, peak value. And that will give me some overhead and make sure that if the brightness of the star that I'm imaging increases, I don't drive the camera into saturation. So in order to do that, uh, I am going to take a snapshot image here. And this snapshot image uh, will be saved down to the hard drive, and we're going to open it in uh, the AIJ program in a couple of minutes to see what the peak ADU of the target star is. So we just have to wait for the 60 second capture. Okay, that's now completed, and that uh, snapshot image has been saved. So now I need to go look at it. So I am going to open AIJ. And I'm going to make sure that I look at the, that image, which is here. And here is our target star in the center here. And if I mouse over the target star with the aperture, you can see that my peak value is in the order of about 15,000. Now that's, I normally, like I said, try and aim for about 20 to uh, 30,000. So that's maybe a little bit on the low side. I can either increase the gain slightly here, um, which I think I'll do just to get a slightly better signal to noise ratio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into sharp cap. I'm gonna change the gain to 150. And I'm gonna take another snapshot. And we will then take a quick look at the, um, the snapshot picture again to look at the PKDU. And hopefully we'll probably run with uh, a gain of 150. Uh, for this evening's run. So again, we have to wait uh, 60 seconds while we capture this image. I'm going to open this new image up in AIJ, which is this one here. I'm going to do that mouse over again. And you will see this time that the peak ADU value is now about 20,000. So I'm quite happy with that. So it looks as though I'm ready to start the image capture run itself. So I'm going to close down AIJ. I'm going to type in my target name, V576 tag. And now I'm going to start my capture. I'm going to do an unlimited number. And we are now capturing the first of what will hopefully be several hundred frames this evening, each taken on a 60 second exposure. So we'll be taking 60 images per hour.